Imagine understanding the science of creation. As I said, it takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of information. We're, we don't we don't go for the whole enchilada. We teach people methodically, step by step, on how to build. On every day, they build a little bit more, they build a little bit more, they get a little bit better. Imagine that you do that to such a degree that you understand how to do it all the time. Now, you're not going to sit down to do the work and be like, oh God, I got to go create now. You're going to be pretty inspired to create. You're going you're gonna to enjoy it. It's going to be something that you look forward to. And that's kind of the thing that I'm proud of uh, when it comes to our community, because we're doers. And people do the work every day because they want the magic to, to be sustained. They want it to continue. Uh, and so it's no longer an obligation. It's no longer a need to do it to please God, to do the right thing, to be good, whatever people do it for. This is because they want to keep that kind of crazy world happening. And, 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 if, and if, you're, if you're in the belief system unconsciously that your body, local in space and time and three-dimensional reality, and you're trying to reach your goals and create your vision and do all the stuff, and you're a body, matter trying to change matter, then you have to drag your body through space every single day to get what you want, back and forth to work, whatever. And it's going to take you time to finally get your goals. That may take you a couple of years. Well, that's because you have to think that I have to move my body to go get what I want. So then I got to compete. I got to force. I got to fight for it. I got to control it. I got to manipulate. I got to figure it out. Well, that's what you do with the limited resources when you're a body local in space and time trying to create something else local in space and time well if you're matter trying to create matter then you got to do stuff to make right. it happen that's the way most of us were taught that's the way brought up that's the way it's, you, you know get the skills get the you know get the you know all the different things well now you got to lay down that very thing you used your whole life to get what you want and we learned another way to do it. So now you're back to matter trying to change matter. And so now you're in that three-dimensional world and you can execute there and we can work it out, but it's gonna take time. Well, when you start realizing when you, where you place your attention is where you place your energy, and the stronger the emotion you feel when you get angry, the more you're gonna pay attention to that person. You're giving your power to that person. You're giving your life force to that person because that's where your attention is. Well, when you learn how to lower the volume to that emotion, you take your attention off that person. You begin to break your energetic bond with that person. You call energy back to you. Now you have energy to heal. You're building your own electromagnetic field. Now, when you understand the science of creation and you understand it happens in the generous present moment, and you're practicing every single day on how to be present. You're not going to start creating until you know that you're beyond yourself and you're creating in the present moment. You know when you're there and when you're not. And you're creating by changing your energy. And you understand when there's a vibrational match between your energy and some potential in the quantum field, you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. You are the magnet. You're drawing the experience. You're collapsing time and space or experience. What could you do to improve yourself? Well, let's step one step backwards. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to either. It's something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, and so will the people around you. Now, and you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that. Because if you're in pain, 
you will care about it. And so you do care about it, even if it's just that negative way, you know. Um, it's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. Sort of pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. So you get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. Well, so then the question might be, well, how would you go about getting your act together? And the answer to that, is, and this is a phenomenological idea too, it's something like, look around for something that bothers you and see if you can fix it. So now you think, well, let's say, there, let's say you go into a, you can do this in a room. It's quite fun to do it just when you're sitting in a room, like a room, maybe your bedroom, you can sit there and just sort of meditate on it and think, okay, if I wanted to, spend 10 minutes making this room better, what would I have to do? And you have to ask yourself that, right? It's not a command, it's like a genuine question. And things will pop out in the room that you know, you like there's a stack of papers over there that's kind of bugging you and you know that maybe little order there would be a good thing. And you know, you haven't, there's some rubbish behind your computer monitor that you haven't attended to for like six months and the room would be slightly better if it was a little less dusty and the cables weren't all tangled up the same way and like, if you, if you allow yourself just to co consider the expanse in which you exist at that moment, there'll be all sorts of things that'll pop out in it that you could just fix. And, you know, I might say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. And I would say, start where you can start, you know? If, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. You know, I often tell people too, fix the things you repeat every day, because people tend to think of those as trivial, right? You get up, you brush your teeth, you, do, you have your breakfast, you know, you, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, those, those probably constitute 50% of your life. And people think, well, they're mundane, I don't need to pay attention to them. It's like, no, no, that's exactly wrong. The things you do every day, those are the most important things you do, hands down. All you have to do is do the arithmetic. You figure it out right away. So, a hundred adjustments to your broader domain of being, and there's a lot less rubbish and there's a lot less rubbish around and a lot fewer traps for you to step into.